Hello everyone, my name is Steven and I am a first year dental student. One of the things that I've recognized most about dental school in my few months uh, being here is that you're constantly being asked to change the way you study in order to perform the best you can. And I guess if you went into dental school with a perfect study regimen and you knew exactly what you were doing, maybe this wouldn't be the case for you, but for me, it's been a bit of trial and error to try to figure out what is the best option for me in order to get the best grades possible in dental school. And after trying a couple of different things, I finally settled on what I think is by far the most effective, and that is Anki. I think at this point Anki is pretty widely published and, and most people probably at least have heard of it. But if you haven't, it's, it's pretty simple. It's basically a flashcard system that has a lot more power than you might think when you first see it. For whatever reason, I was really reluctant to jump on the Anki train, and it wasn't until the middle of this past semester, my first semester of dental school, when I realized maybe I should give it a shot and, and just see what it's all about and try. And after downloading it and starting to use it and learning it, I immediately realized why everybody goes crazy over Anki. It makes perfect sense. There's two main reasons why Anki is so special and why it functions so well. I've talked about this in the past, but the two biggest things that you need to consider when you're studying are the concepts of spaced repetition and active recall. Active recall is basically the idea that we, in order to learn, we should be pulling information from our brain instead of putting information into it. And so this translates basically to asking ourselves questions instead of simply reading through content. And the other idea there is spaced repetition, which is the idea that we should see information periodically leading up to our test instead of simply um, cramming it all in, I guess, the week before. There's this idea of the forgetting curve, and basically the more you see a topic periodically, the less likely you are to forget it. And there's a lot of research about this and it's been discussed widely. But the main point here is that Anki is able to optimize both of these things and kind of put them into one. And ultimately we're, we get fantastic results if we use it. So that's kind of the theory as to why I decided to start using Anki. Um, but in this video, I, I kind of just want to show a couple things I've learned about specifically how to make cards that are most effective. And so we will jump right on in to the computer and just check out what I'm talking about. All right, so jumping right into the computer, I'm going to pull up Anki, of course, as well as my slide that I'm going to be working from. Now, this is the PowerPoint that was distributed to us by our teachers. Of course, I need to note here that we are currently um, still basically under the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. So we've had this entire semester online and this entire semester, I haven't been going to a lecture hall to take notes on, on something like this. It's been simply uh, me doing it at home. So this is literally how I've been doing it. Um, and I wanted to just take this slide. This is not necessarily anything specific, but this uh, entire topic for this lecture was the oral cavity and it's histology. So it's not necessarily dentistry, but it's more so um, the histology of the oral cavity and the tissues that are involved. So right here we have our Anki interface. And if you've never used it, uh, you might think it's pretty simple looking and it, and it definitely is, but it's very powerful. You can also see that I haven't used it for very long um, because this is this is all that I've done. So I'm, I'm definitely new to it, but in the time that I have used it, I've picked up some good tips and that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new deck and that is where I'm gonna put my cards for this um, particular slide. So we're gonna go down here to create deck and we'll just name this something random, um, test deck or oral cavity. Okay, so once we've made our deck, we can go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna simply hit the A key and that's going to pull up this page or this little tab and that's gonna allow us to add our cards. I, I like to go ahead and just make this a little bigger so I'll pop that over there. I'm using Magnet by the way. Magnet is an amazing app. It allows you to snap everything into, into, into view and it's perfect. So the first thing that I'm gonna do when I make a card is I'm gonna actually screenshot the slide. So I'm gonna hit Shift Command 4 on Mac and I'm gonna go ahead and pull down like that and screenshot. Then I'm gonna take it from down here, bottom corner, and I'm gonna drag it into the back extra column. 
Now this is uh, getting into something a little bit more advanced, but I have what's called an add-on on this uh, Anki, and add-ons are basically things you can download from the internet for free to make your Anki better. And this particular add-on is called Frozen Fields, and when I first heard about it, I didn't understand how I was gonna implement that for myself, but it makes a lot of sense. What Frozen Fields does is you basically click this button, the little snowflake button, and it keeps the picture or the text, whatever you put in this particular um, box, it keeps that in there for as many cards as you make. So for every slide that I go through and all of their cards are gonna be paired with the slide itself. So when I'm studying them, I basically can go back and check the slide and see, you know, if I got the card wrong when I was studying it, I can see where's this information? Why did I get it wrong? I can read up on it a little bit more. But yeah, after I do that and I screenshot, I'm gonna go ahead and start making cards. Now, this is the portion that I think is really important. I think that instead of making one card per topic, you should try to make as many as possible. Now, what this is gonna do is it's gonna be a lot of work on the top end. You're gonna to have to be making a whole lot of cards and that's gonna be pretty time consuming. But you'll see that when you start studying, you're you're basically learning the information more so than the cards. And this is kind of weird and it's hard to describe, but when you're studying these cards, sometimes your mind can see the length of text or the picture involved or the, the pattern of the words, and your brain immediately associates those things with the answer instead of the actual information. And like I said, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically instead of learning the information that you're supposed to be learning, you're learning by memory what the card looks like and that's how you answer it. And that's obviously bad because on the test, you're not gonna get these cards, you're gonna get a test question and it, you have to know the information, not your Anki card. So the way to combat this is to make multiple cards per topic and try to change up the way that you word your cards in order to um, see the information multiple times and understand it every time you see it. So let's just start making cards here. Um, first off, we're talking about the oral cavity. So we can basically make our first card, which is this top portion in red and say, um, what uh, elements make up the mucosa? Now, this is another thing that's important. Up here, you'll find the type of card and I use closed deletions for everything. And you're gonna see a couple of different options here for how to, um, or like what types of cards you wanna use. I use closed deletions for everything. I used to switch between basic and closed deletions, uh, but I found that there's no need to do that. You can simply use closed deletions for everything. Now, what is a closed deletion? You'll see here in a second. To make a closed deletion, I'm gonna hit Shift Command C, and you're gonna see this weird little symbol pop up, but basically what we type inside of this little field is going to be invisible to us when we're studying and we're gonna have to then guess the answer. So my question here, what elements make up the, mu the mucosa? I can now put the answer to that question, which is epithelium, our epithelial layer, plus our lamina propria. So that's my card. When I go ahead and hit add, or I like to use the, I like to try to use the keys for everything. So command return will get us that card added. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what this looks like when we actually go to study it. So um, I'll kind of back out just to show you everything. We'll click on test deck and then we can hit study now. And so here's what our card is gonna look like. And you'll see here that what we put inside for our answer is not visible to us. And the way that we make that visible is by hitting the space bar or hitting the show answer down here. And this is, this is the idea of active recall. We don't know the answer and we have to pull it from our brain instead of just simply looking at it. So um, when I see this question, what elements make up the, muco the mucosa, I have to think about it. And when I, when I think I have an answer, I hit the space bar and it shows me what is the actual answer. It also shows me the slide here so that I can see um, that these elements are, are what makes up the, uh, the mucosa. So that's one card made. Now we're gonna get into some of these other points and I'll show you how I'm doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit A again. Um, so, all right, the, the way I would do this, now this, this slide is discussing the mastic masticatory mucosa, which is uh, one of the elements of the oral cavity. And I would just go ahead and instead of saying, what is the mast masticatory mucosa, because that's not really gonna help you, I would go ahead and, first off, actually I forgot, I need to um, screenshot my slide again, because I had to back out and show you how to study it. So we're gonna put that back in there. Um, and then I'm, just, I'm basically gonna say like where, so where is, the masticatory 
found. And then I'm gonna go ahead, close deletion, command shift C, and we're gonna go found on surfaces with forceful manipulation of food during chewing. Now you could also, you could also copy and paste that in if you don't wanna type it all out. And you could also shorten that a little bit if you, if you didn't want that full answer. But that's a card made, so we're gonna do that. Now, this is important. We have one card on the, to the topic of where is the masticatory mucosa found. But in my opinion, the way to, to succeed with this is to actually make multiple cards per topic, like I talked about earlier. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to do this. I'm going to say the closed deletion masticatory, and then I'm gonna go down, down, with the uh, little down arrow, and that's gonna take me out of my closed deletion. And then I'm gonna say mucosa is found, and then I'm actually just gonna copy and paste. So that, command C, command B. Oh, that's not it. Uh, sometimes you have to actually, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna do command B if I wanna get rid of bold. So there is my card. Now, the masticatory mucosa is found on surfaces with forceful manipulation. So. Once again, this is the way you're technically supposed to use closed deletions is you put them within your sentence. So we're gonna add this, and then we're gonna go back to study the cards, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So there's the elements of the mucosa, and here is this card that I just made. So as you can see, the closed deletion is within the sentence, and we have to then recall which mucosa is it that is found on these surfaces with forceful manipulation of food. So that's, that's kind of the, the typical way of using closed deletion. And now we have two cards that cover the same topic. Let's go ahead and keep adding because this is super fun. And I'm just gonna pull my slide back in. All right, so uh, one classic way is what covers the gingiva and hard palette. You'll notice I make a lot of mistakes when I type. I'm still working on getting better at typing. Closed deletion. And I'm going to say masticatory mucosa. Uh, yeah, mucosa. And that is one card. And then uh, we can also make a card that says what or which tissue covers, oh my gosh, the gingiva and hard palate. Masticatory mucosa. So you see that I'm, I'm getting multiple cards per topic and this is, I just think so important. And it's something that I didn't do when I first started using Anki, but in the uh, couple of weeks or month, two months, however long it's been that I've been using it, I've learned that this is the best way to combat uh, what I was talking about earlier, which is memorizing the card and not necessarily the information. And so just moving down again, I'll do another example or two. Uh, we'll look at the, the next point here, this epithelial point. I'm gonna say the epithelium, of the masticatory mucosa is, and then I'm gonna just close deletion, parakeratinized, or keratinized. Another way to say uh, this point, or another way to make this point in a card with the epithelium is to say, and you could do this, this is maybe not as good, but it, you could say, in the oral cavity, to give yourself some context when you're studying, the blank masticatory, so this is our closed deletion, mucosa. And the reason I'm putting the mucosa part outside of the closed deletion is because there are multiple types of mucosa in the actual oral cavity. So when you're studying this, you're gonna be studying uh, the masticatory, the lining, the specialized, and these are all different um, types of mucosa that we can find in there. So I'm gonna say, which one is the uh, mucosa that is parakeratinized or keratinized? And once again, we just have multiple cards per topic, and this is the absolute best way to do it. To drive this point home, I'm gonna once again, go back in and show you what it looks like when we're studying it. And so here's our question, which tissue covers the gingiva and hard palate? I think back, uh, I know that the mucosa is, is very prevalent in the oral cavity. Which one is it? Uh, it's the one that deals with stress of chewing. That's the masticatory mucosa. So that's our answer.
And then we have the slide there. If we got that wrong, we can go back in and see, oh yeah, masticatory, it has all these features, it does this, whatever. Our next question, and I'm just gonna hit the space bar, that's literally all I do, is uh, what covers the gingiva and the hard palate? Well, mm, let's say I don't know the answer to that. I have no idea. I hit the space bar and I'm like, shoot, it's the masticatory mucosa. Well, how do I basically tell myself or tell the uh, the computer, the, the software, that I got that wrong. You'll see down here this, again, good and easy. And this is really cool because it allows it allows you to rank how you did, it, did on the card. And this is important because you want to be studying the cards that, you're, that you don't know, not necessarily the ones that you do know. So my approach to this is if I get the card right, I almost always hit the space bar, which immediately selects good. Um, and this is kind of confusing. It gets into some of the settings and I'm not gonna talk about that, but basically that is what decides when the card shows back up. So if I get it right, I'm gonna hit good. I very rarely hit easy, because if you hit easy, typically that's going to just kind of get rid of the card and you don't really wanna do that. You wanna keep seeing them. So I'm gonna hit good, but this one I got wrong. So what I'm actually gonna do is hit one on my keyboard. And you can also do this one, two, three, if you want, um, and just one equals again, two equals good, and three equals easy. So I got this one wrong, I'm gonna hit again. Now with the settings of this current Anki deck, that card will show back up in one minute. And hopefully by then, after doing some other cards and just having seen what the answer to that card is, I'll be able to get it right. So yeah, this is how you study with Anki and it's extremely powerful as you can see. I have a couple other uh, add-ons that I think are important and uh, one of the main ones is, is image occlusion, which is extremely good for um, anytime you're having to identify structures. So really good for anatomy and things like that. And I'm not necessarily gonna talk about that in this video because I don't want this video to be too long, but I really just wanted to show you Anki and show you that uh, sort of the process that I go through when I actually make cards. The top end of my study period is always very card making heavy. So I spend a lot of time um, making cards from the slides that I'm given. And then the last week or so before the test is when I really am studying these cards and just going through them. And I try to study them every day, but really it's so much time on the top end just making them that that's kind of like how I have to do it. And yeah, that's it. Um, Anki is fantastic. I don't know why I was so reluctant to get involved and, and to, to start using it. I think it was just because I, I thought that it was maybe more complicated than it actually is. But hopefully this video showed you that um, it is pretty simple. You can get, you can start using it. It's free to use on your computer. You have to pay if you want to use it on your iPhone or iPad, which I haven't paid for it and I haven't really ever found that I need to. I think once we go back to school and I'm actually on campus, there might be a little bit more need for me to have it on my phone so that I can do cards kind of just sitting in the hallways and stuff or before lectures. But being at home and being on my computer all day, I don't need the, the iOS versions. And yeah, that's just sort of a theory that, that I've had about studying and what I've come up with in an entire semester of dental school. I hope that this video helped you. If you're thinking about using Anki or if you already use it and you just kind of have like a couple questions about how to use it better, these are just the things that I've learned about it. And I think that they're really effective in helping you get those good grades. So if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for coming and stopping by and watching this video. I hope that you liked this video and I hope that you want to see more like it. If you do, there's going to be a couple videos linked here on the screen that you can check out, or you can also just go to my channel and see what else I've put up. But always remember to like this video and to subscribe because that helps me out a ton and I'm trying to grow the channel, which is slow at the start, but hopefully will pick up. And yeah, thank you as always. Let me know if you enjoyed it and I will try to make something again in the future. I can also talk about image occlusion in the future, which is another really important feature. So thank you as always and good luck with the studying. Get this out of here. I don't want to ever see this again, but I have to for the final because it's cumulative.